Hello and welcome to this episode of Authentic Achievements, where it's my absolute delight to be joined by the fabulous Susan Fry. Susan, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this conversation. I know we always get really stuck in and you've got such great insight. But before I get carried away, let me share with the audience listening and watching a little bit more about you. So Susan Fry is a seasoned executive coach and transformation expert with nearly three decades of experience in helping individuals optimize their personal and professional lives. She blends health, wellness, and business acumen to enhance performance and productivity, boosting cash flow in business. Central to her approach is the understanding that true success arises from self-love and holistic integration of physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual dimensions. Through her Simply Love process, Susan addresses core beliefs holding clients back, guiding them to unlock their full potential. She's also a mother of four and an avid pickleball player. Susan is a beacon of inspiration and empowerment. I mean, what an amazing journey you've, you've already had. But could you share with us a little bit about the journey you've been on so far? Well, I have been, you know, I painted years ago when I had my four children at home. You know, love what I do and do what I love. And I follow that motto. And so sometimes it's a, well, not sometimes, most of the time it's outside of the box and thinking. But it's when I discovered having the joy that comes from being who you are that, you know, I started sharing it. I love that. It's so true, isn't it? We've got the one commodity that we've all got that is priceless is time. It's the only thing we can't buy more of. And so spending it doing things we love instead of spending it doing things that we hate um, sounds super simple, but it's not that easy, is it? No, it's not always easy. Um, it's just becoming more aware. And I think as you become more aware and present, you can do it. Um, I, I think it is very easy. It, I mean, it's very simple, but it's not always easy. And mm -hmm. I think it's ourselves that get get in the way. So, and it's a part of my whole Simply Love process is that when you truly, genuinely reach down and love yourself, you're going to do those things that are good for you. But the problem is a lot of it's the subconscious. People don't think about loving themselves because their subconscious mind is canceling it. Yeah. yeah. That makes any sense at all. Well, it, is. it makes it makes total sense because I think, you know, I was reading somewhere that we, you know, we create our sort of blueprint when we're seven and we um, we enforce it at 14 and we embed it at 21. And unless we go back and look at whether or not it still serves us, we're basically running on outdated software <laughs> that is very often getting in our own way. And uh, you know, I certainly had to go on a journey to update my software in the last 10 years when I realized actually I was I was the problem. I was the thing holding me back because I was busy giving, giving, giving to everybody else, but I wasn't ever doing any self-care or any self-love. And um, and that felt selfish um, to do. So every time I tried to do something for myself, I'm like, no, no, being selfish, go and do something for somebody else instead. Um, and it, it was a big journey of discovery to go and find out how to actually like myself, because you know, I've not worked out yet how to get away from me. You know, wherever I go, I go. So right. I that, that, you know, that needed to become a friendship and not a frenemy. Um, so how do you help people get started on that journey? Well, first of all, you got to find out what you want, you know, and, and you ask people what they want, what they truly want. And that will, and a lot of times people are going after things that they don't want. Yeah. And, you know, a good point is, and then look at what's holding you back from having it. Because a truly empowered woman really does love herself yeah. and give herself what she desires. And, uh, but, so the way I do it with my process, though, is I help people to become more aware. Yeah. And I have an assessment that helps me to see what's holding them back subconsciously. What I've found is that most people, you know, we all want to be loved. We all want to be successful, free. We all want to be happy. 
And, you know, my whole I was learning, trying to prove myself with her. And I work with a lot of women now that they'll climb that ladder of success and find out they're on the wrong wall, they're not fulfilled. And it's my process is really a very simple, powerful process that just leads to greater awareness and real self-love. And unless you can really genuinely love yourself, when you do, you unleash a power within yourself. And But the way I do it is I first identify their self-defeating loops, habits, patterns, behaviors that are keeping them from loving themselves. Because like most people nowadays, when you say, self-love they think of taking care of themselves yeah, yeah and it's not just about that you are love you are loved and you are part of this universe that's held together with love but i find that most people don't just naturally automatically go there because they got these subconscious beliefs is like no i've been hurt before yeah. i'm not going there you know, just like I came from a pretty traumatic childhood and what I saw mom and dad was hurting each other. So in my mind, love hurts. So I'm keeping it out. Yeah. I'm receiving it. But I can go and earn it. I can go please everybody. I can go prove myself. I'm safe there. The subconscious mind will do anything to keep you safe. Yeah. yeah. So my process is it's really simple. It's just You've got to first identify that, and then you reprogram the brain. You learn to genuinely love yourself. I have several things that we can do, but does that kind of give you a general idea? Yeah, I can it does, because I think in, in one of the things that I've found you know, over the years with people is we're not very good at knowing what we want. We know what we don't want. Um, so, you know, I, I speak to that many clients who've set their goal in the negative. You know, I, I don't want to have a lack of sales. I don't want to um, be going great. I don't want to be doing this. And you're like, but what do you want? Because the subconscious brain has no sense of humor, does it? When we tell it, it's going to take you there like a sat nav. So if we're focused on what we don't want, we're going to get more of it, aren't we? Right, exactly. The same when you're talking to people. Do you find one of the big problems is understanding first what it is they really do want rather than what it is they really don't want? Well, a lot of people think are the hard ones are a lot of people that think they know what they want because they're defining themselves by this image outside this themselves. Yeah, yeah. Who you are, truly, if you connect to who you are, you know what you want. Yeah, yeah. But too many people are defining themselves by their choices, their mistakes. They're trying to be somebody that they're not or they're trying to be somebody that they think they should be or and so if you're trying to be out here most people don't know what they want because they're not connected yeah. and when i say i look at a person on all four levels physically emotionally mentally and spiritually because if you're not if you don't know who you are so a lot of times i have to get I back up way back and I say, okay, first of all, you have to choose. Yeah. You have the power of choice. A lot of people don't know that they can choose to know who they are. And they've got to choose it. They've got to look at who am I? They got to know. And I, I have a uh, who am I paper that I do with people and I have them write out a three page paper. Who am I? physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And if you do that humbly, you'll know who you are. Then I say, okay, after you write it out, wait 72 hours, write it again. And who am I? Next, the next time you do it, it won't be as long. And then I have them do it one more time. If you write out who you are, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, that paper will be worth more than all the gold in the world. Yeah. Because when you know who you are, you'll know what you want. Yeah. And 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 when you when you know who you are and what you want, you do want to choose to love yourself. 
but that loving self is not just self-care it's a recognition of who you are yeah we're all love i love that because it's, it's true i mean for, for me personally when i went on my journey you know i didn't like myself and now i do now i relish spending time with myself because actually i like me i like who i am and who i stand for uh, and that was a big shift for me uh like yeah. I, I had to I had to go inward first and I had to go and face all those dark bits that I didn't want to. And, and for me, one of the big, one of the hardest things to admit was all of these things that I'd used as excuses to not move me forward. Well, they might think this, and they might think that, and they might think the other, um, was actually me. Those people didn't think that at all. Uh, I'd never even asked them. I'd never given them the, the, the actual uh, respect to ask them what they thought. I instead created what they thought and then used it as a reason to not move forward. Um, and so for me, the, you know, it was it was a, it was quite a tough process to go through, but a joyous one when you get to the other side of it and when I can genuinely say, now I like myself and I can appreciate myself. And and the shift for me personally, when, when I um, first started, I was asked to say three things that I appreciated about myself. And it was the most excruciating half an hour of my life. I couldn't come up with anything. Everything I tried, I've got great friends, that's not about you. I've got amazing family, yeah, that's not about you. And I literally, I'm still rocking, going, I can't think of anything. And I eventually came up, after half an hour, I came up with, I've got quite nice eyes. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that that's how bad I was. Well, um, you know, a lot of people are that way. I, yeah. Yeah, it, I, it was. I mean, I hated myself until my 30s. Didn't yeah. even know it. No. I was just out to prove myself worthy trying to earn the love i got real good at it yeah, yeah. okay but it leaves you empty it and does. that's where all these women are burnt out now yeah because yeah. they're not doing really what they want they're not being who they are and they're not really loving themselves self-love yeah. is just a recognition of who you are but let me give you the side note what what once you experience that it's pure joy. Yeah, yeah. And you'll always come back to it. Yeah. You always get, and you get better and better and better at recognizing, oh, who am I? And accepting yourself in all your imperfections and flaws and mistakes. You're not your choices. You're not your mistakes. You, you know, you are who you are. You are who you were born to be. And then here's another. I talked to a lady earlier who, you know, is trying to be this good person. Well, if you can't be somebody, then, then who you already are. The transformation comes when you accept yourself. It's, it's so simple, but so out there for some people because of our subconscious minds and until you get to those beliefs about who you believe on an unconscious level you are you're going to try a hundred different programs yeah, yeah, yeah because the subconscious mind is going to do whatever it can to get you safe yeah. and if you're not safe you're not going there yeah, you see, I, I definitely recognize that from, and you know, unfortunately for me, I was well into my 40s before I started the journey. Well, so I was, in my, I was in my middle 30s before I even learned to love myself. Yeah, I was a late starter. Mine was, mine was uh, late 40s, but a large part of mine was when I realized that if I didn't learn to love myself, I was going to teach my little girl not to love herself. Because children don't just learn by what we do and say, they learn by how we are and how we show up. And so for, for me, she was my catalyst, which was, if I don't want to leave the legacy that she does this to herself, I've got to fix doing it to myself. And I've got to I've got to find a way of loving myself so that actually I can teach her to love herself and to distance. I love what you're saying about that. Like, you know, you're not your choices. I always we don't say I don't say like that's naughty or that's good here. And we'll talk about whether or not it was a positive choice or a negative choice. And so the reason it's a choice is because the beauty of choice is the minute you make one that doesn't serve you, you can make a different one. It's like you don't have to you, you don't have to wear it for the rest of your life. You know, we've got so many sayings of old, haven't we, that are just 
they're just wrong like you know you've made your bed you've got to lie in it we haven't it's your bed get back out make it again it's like there's always a new beginning that's there's it it's always a new beginning absolutely but i think a lot of times women try to get that new beginning by trying to remake themselves reinvent and it's not about changing who you are it's about more about accepting who you are you yeah. know it's yeah so yeah there's always a new beginning there is and and we always get you know i've i've learned in life that everything in it is either a lesson a blessing or both so when i'm not feeling blessed um i look for the lesson and the blessings right there because it's teaching you something like that is going to help you be who you're here to be because i believe you we're all we've all got a purpose um right. and once, we, once we acknowledge who we are and we and we accept who we are our purpose becomes really clear and then our ability to meet that purpose becomes so much easier because we've now got the you know that subconscious mind working for us instead of working it thinks okay. for us, but actually it's often against us, isn't it? Right. And well, yeah, and the, like I said, the subconscious is just canceling out everything that's not going to be safe. Well, if you grew up in a place where you didn't feel safe, then you're going to have some hardwiring that needs, you need to create a new operating system. Yeah. Just the internal. It's not external. And so many people try to look out themselves outside themselves to change themselves no it's inward because it all starts with you all answers are in you yeah I, I i absolutely get that so what would you say has been your proudest moment so far well of course it's being a mother you know mother of four children but in my work it's so fulfilling because I can help people. I've helped a lot of people, well, start businesses, be successful in their businesses. I've helped people get pregnant that didn't have the, you know, couldn't get pregnant, change the mindset. I've helped people, I've helped women lose weight. And that's a big deal to a woman. It's, I just help people get what they truly want. Yeah. It's possible anything is possible so i have like these 90 day breakthrough challenges where they're small groups of women so what i do is i give them an assessment they put on there what they want their goal and then in the 90 days we have a breakthrough challenge to achieve that goal and there's very few people that ever don't get what the challenge is yeah they break through, they get their challenge. And that's fulfilling. There's nothing more fulfilling than that. But other than having children, there's no greater joy than being a mother, right? Oh, no, there isn't. It's a, and for me, they're in, your, your children are an everyday reminder of the fact that anything is possible. You know, they, they look at the world with such wonder and curiosity until we teach them to stop being curious because curiosity killed the cat and we put them in a little box and we tell them that these are the rules and this is where you play and then we try and turn them all into little clones of each other because they all have to learn how to do exactly the same things and you're like no no, 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 no. They, 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 you see their little personalities coming out in, in when they're so tiny um and you kind of just look at that and go that's the bit you've got to keep hold of isn't it that, that you should be whoever you're here to be. Well, um, you know, when my children were born, I had home births. I had four home births. And when they came out and I looked at them, their personality, when they came out, is the same personality they have today. Yeah. You can't change it. Well, no, it's, it's weird. I mean, I remember with, with um, Scarlett when I, when I was pregnant, we used to we used to play this little game because uh, I read somewhere that if you if you start communicating them with them when they're in the womb, it helps them to be better communicators. So we'd have this little game where I'd, I'd say something and I'd poke a part of, of my stomach and then I wouldn't say anything else until she kicked or punched where I'd been. And then we'd go and do it somewhere else. We did it every day, which was fine until one day they were trying to actually get a heartbeat. And I was like, oh, sorry, she thinks she's playing a game. <laughs> Every time they were going, she was moving somewhere else because she thought that was the game we were playing. Oh my goodness! Um, but 
And we, when we, but you kind of get it and go, you know, that, that mischievous, cheeky little personality was there even then. Um, because it comes, it, it, I think our journey is always back to ourselves, isn't it? Yeah. Um, this journey back to ourselves faster <laughs> than others. Um, but once we do journey back to ourselves and we become who we are supposed to be without all of the um, labels and the shackles and the, the external challenges, that's when we really do build that life we dream of. And everyone's life dream is different to everybody else's, isn't it? It's like, kind oh, of it's so different. different. Yeah. I just always want to look over our shoulder what, you know, what our neighbor's writing in case we get it wrong. Because it's like, well, that's their dream. It's not. No. Might not be mine. I don't, it doesn't have to be the same. I think learning to break away from saying, actually, I might want something different, and that's okay, because we are all unique, aren't we? Yeah, extremely. All four of my children are completely different. Completely. Yeah. And you can't change it. You can't make them anyway. Well, no, because they're, they're here to be who they're here to be, aren't they? So mm -hmm. what would you say has been your greatest lesson so far? Um my greatest lesson uh, that you can't control love you know i tried forever to control love and i remember one time with my mentor when i went through my divorce and i had all these emotions and i'd go to him and i'd say well he did this he did that and he um he'd say well so and so will be who he is just let it go off your back. You don't have to go into emotion over it, right? And then I thought, oh, I said, Larry, I got a great idea. Just take away the love and then I won't go into the emotion anymore. And he looked at me and he's like, Susan, you cannot control love. And I've since learned that you cannot control a good man either. So a lot of times women get in there and they try to control a man and a good man will not have anything to do with it or vice versa. But, um, you know, you can't earn love. You can't be perfect to be loved. You can't try to prove yourself worthy. I would try to prove myself worthy of God's love. I'm going to do this, this, and this. I'm going to be perfect. And then I'll get, but really what I was seeking was validation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was thinking that love, I mean, that love really was validation. So I would do all of these things. There's plenty of counterfeits to love, but love you can't control. And you cannot control pure, true, unconditional love. And that's when you have to learn to submit and surrender. So, yeah, it's you can't control it. You have to submit and when you've been hurt in the past, you do not want to submit. Yeah. And, it, you know, and a lot of it's unconscious. We don't, I don't go around thinking, oh, I'm going to control love, but I was busy trying to earn it. I was yeah, yeah. trying to look good. I was trying to be perfect. I was trying to get all these achievements. I would play sports as a little girl and I mean, like four and five years old with boys five years older than me because my brother was five years older than me. I would literally catch the ball on the other side of the field. I, I didn't have any mind to stop me, but I did it to get that validation, that approval. Yeah. And I was super good in sports, super good, because I learned you know, run, Susie, boom, you get you get that love. It's so, funny how we create these, um, and then we become self-fulfilling prophecies, don't we? What we tell ourselves is going to be what happens to us because we, you know, our, our subconscious brain tries to help us to achieve what we're telling it. It's just often we're not telling it what we want. We're telling it the exact opposite of that. And I, I get that whole, you know, that, that was when you get external validation, it doesn't matter how much external validation you get, it won't mean anything until you can internally validate yourself has been one of the things I learned. Uh, well, and, that yeah. and you know, the thing about it is, is I can guarantee you one thing. When I guarantee my clients one thing, 100% sure, 
that anything built upon control will eventually crumble. Yeah, yeah. So these people go in and these women, businesses, or marriages, 20 years after marriage, and they're like, I don't know what happened. It was built upon control, validation, mm -hmm. codependent, whatever. But anything built on control will eventually crumble. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. So I've learned my lesson on the control and, and learning to just let go to the love. The hardest thing, and I was having this conversation earlier with somebody, is to learn to just receive love. I'll get really big, and I still run into these behaviors. Now, I've cleared the core issues out, but I have to watch every once in a while. And I'll get busy sometimes because I can get stuff done. I'm quick. I played shortstop. I, I mean, I could, my sister trained me as a little girl. Okay, she'd tell me 10 things to do and see how fast I could do it. She was smart. She's trying to get me to clean up for her. You know? But sometimes I can get going and I can be really quick and get a lot done. And then I feel good about myself. I used to. That was my validation. That was my love. That's not love. Yeah. But I get so busy. Sometimes I still get busy. And my son will say to me, Mom, are you letting the love in? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a, a child being caught in the candy store. I'm like, oh, no, thank you for reminding me. And mm -hmm. I'm finding that the vulnerability and the humility is much more powerful than that control. Yeah, yeah. And receiving that love. We as women are receivers. And in business, you may think, well, that won't go in business. It takes you a hundred times farther when yeah. you see yeah it, and it's funny isn't it? it's one of the things that we can find so difficult I, mean, I certainly was a, I was a very good giver and a very bad receiver um and and I didn't realize the impact I had on other people as a result of that as well because they would give you the, that great feedback or they give you like the gift of something and it was as if you didn't want it and that wasn't true it wasn't because you didn't want it it's because you didn't feel you deserved it um but seeing the change in my relationships now that you know now that actually I can receive it and and do and I'm grateful every time that I do um, has been has been amazing and I think it's um you know for I, I think it is it's it's, it's moving that part round and I, I you know, one of the things I learned about leadership is the first thing you've got to get you've got to do is get comfortable with the uncomfortable you're never going to be in control you're never going to be in control because people are messy and they won't follow the rules all of the time and it, things it's will very be perfect. Yeah, because that's what we're supposed to be. So unless you can get comfortable with the uncomfortable, which is there will be an unknown, something will get taken out of your hands, you will get to, you know, you'll have to roll with the punches sometimes. And then actually, life becomes so much easier when, when you do that. I, I remember doing a big redundancy program and saying to the board the day before, and they were like, Kim, are we ready? And I was like, ready as we'll ever be. And they did look a bit horrified. They were like, ah, what do you mean? Should we cancel? And I said, well, no, what I mean is, we're going to tell 1800 people their jobs are at risk tomorrow. I have no idea what that piece of information when added to the burden they're already carrying is going to do, nor could I ever know. So all I can do is be there for them, hold the space while they process however that works for them. Um, as because that's what we've got to do. We can't control it. What we can do is be there, be who you are, be present. Yeah, be present, be intentional. I live, that's what you've talked about a lot you know, throughout the, throughout the podcast is making an intentional decision about what we're, about what we're choosing. Um, and therefore you've got to be much more present to it, haven't it? You? You've got to be much more aware of not just, you know, I was thinking everything, you know, there's a cost of doing something, but there's a cost of not doing it. And actually looking at both sides of that equation before we move. And um, even if we do that at speed, and yeah, I think we're very similar. I do a lot of things at speed. I, my team used to hate Fridays because I worked from home on a Friday and they'd be like, by lunchtime, you've bombed us with all the work that we've put on your desk all week because you've been busy. And then you've turned it around and put it all back on hours by lunchtime. And I was like, what was being helpful? <laughs> they were like, no, we hate Friday. <laughs> we're like, send her out somewhere so she can't do as much work. Um, but again, that was back to how I deemed my value before. Yes. And, and now, now that you've changed that, you kind of go back, you look and go, 
imagine if I could go back and, and change that. So on that on that note, if you could go back and give yourself, your younger self, a piece of advice, what would it be? Um, stop trying so hard. You know, it's, you know, and like I said, it would be to let the love in. Just it's 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 not I don't have to try so hard. Yeah. I and, you know, which trying so hard is the overthinking, you know, and um, and it really is. And just letting the love in because it's a different world. It's, a you know, when you've grown up trying to control everything because you want to be safe and um, to let the love in, it's, it's a different world. So, but it's a beautiful, I mean, the love is all around us. Yeah. And it sounds, you know, some people would say cheesy or whatever, but love is where miracles happen. And yeah. when you have that love and open your heart, it has a way of working things out that we could never do. Life has got your back. Yeah. And and it's really not that complicated. It's us that's making it complicated. So I would tell my young, I used to, as a, I remember as a teenager thinking I was ugly. And I'd have gobs of guys around me as friends because I thought I was ugly. I wasn't letting the love in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it it holds us back. And we don't let the love in because we don't realize that we are love. Yeah. That we think, you know, I used to think, oh well, I'm bad this or that. And so until you get to those core beliefs, you can do all this self-help work. I, I hate to say it, I the self-help work to, to out the guru. But yeah. When you get to those core subconscious beliefs and really see that the, the ones and we all have them i don't care i've talked um, there's people that come from very good homes and still there's subtle underlying generational things that come through and they have a hard time seeing oh i had a good childhood well, we still have these beliefs and a lot beliefs about ourselves. And a lot of people do not see that these underlying beliefs and they do all of this stuff. They work their guts out and all to find out, you know, like climb that ladder of success and they're on the wrong wall and yeah. they're not fulfilled. I work with a lot of people that aren't fulfilled. They, they're, I've worked with people that are incredibly talented and they can do just about anything but that deep down inside you know they're missing and um so i would tell my just let the love in yeah but i would tell my younger self you are loved i'm part of this love that's the unit that holds the universe together and and lately I have been coming out more. And now you may say, how does that work in business? Well, in business, when you can get a person aligned with who they are, they know who they are. They will know what they want. They're humble. When you truly love yourself, you're humble. Yeah. You see miracles happen. Things happen from week to week when people are aligned with who they are. Some people, you know, or show up for themselves. Same thing as love yourself. Yeah. Show up for yourself, you know, and be aligned, be your authentic self. You know, I have the authentic blueprint assessment because people want, to, they crave that because yeah. if you really touch and are being your authentic self, which is loving yourself the joy that comes and the things that happen, you yeah. can't explain. And that's why children are so, so wonderful because they, they just go in that flow. Yeah. No, I, 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 I so get it. Susan, I could literally chat to you all day, but I'm conscious that we are oh um, running out of time. Um, so how, how best can people get into it? Obviously we'll have all of your details in the show notes below. 
but what's the best way people can reach out to learn more and see how they can work with you? Well, you can go to my LinkedIn, um, go to my LinkedIn, you can message me, um, you know, you can uh, take my authentic blueprint assessment. And then when you get through taking it, at the end of it, it'll take you to my calendar and we can schedule time to go over the results, get to know each other, or some people will just do a discovery call. You don't have to do the assessment and we can get to know each other. I can help answer your questions or just chat because I like to learn about other people too. Oh, Susan, I love that. We will have all of those details just in the notes below so that people can reach out and connect with you. But my gratitude for coming and spending this time with us and sharing your love and your insight. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Until next time, take care.